soon as that starts happening, uh, you're in trouble. Uh, so try to get there as close as you can without the post effects. And then at the end, put it on the center grid. That's a little bit right now. Yeah, I'd say actually, I mean, I'm just thinking about some of the tools that we have in there now. And it's not, not a washed out game like we're talking about, but inside the game control, um, one of our uh, rendering engineers actually has a, a brightness and contrast and an offset. So I can actually take just the darks and bring them up. So for example, if you wanted to get rid of the darks, then you could just uh, use the offset on the darks and bring those up. You could actually probably get the look that you're talking about, and also do the same thing with the brights. You know, offset towards the brights and bring those up. So um, as a first pass, I probably would say fill the strands and then do it that, um, with some controls. So you would leave, so you're saying that, um, that would be done in the menu? Yeah, you can. And contrast is a, you, you can't do it in the engine, it's a great place to do it, but um, if the question is regarding well filling your Instagram, just do it because you've got your basis covered then. Um, and then, you know, if you want to back the contrast off, do it if you like it, but don't, just, you will get hammered if you don't put your Instagrams on that kind of stuff. If, if you have dynamic lighting, it's just going to be a big deal. Um, roughly how many layers do you communicate with the Instagram and the whole Is that a classified question? So we have uh, we have right now four uh, layers, and then one of our dirt layers has six layers within that dirt layer. So uh, we have an organic layer, which we have six layers, and then that's part of the layer that we have uh, four elements. Um, so it's yeah, something we're using. That seems to be that's a lot. We have three, and then we have one more. So we're really happy with that. So we're going to go. There's a question there, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, design wins. They're God, uh, even if they shouldn't be. Uh, art supports design. So for it to be compelling, everything needs to support design. So we really work closely with them and suggest things. But ultimately, it's like, you know, they will sort of make a vision and we'll try to um, support them as best we can for art. And the, the other thing I think is important, um, you know, a lot of times uh, designers will be thinking uh, instinctively and just say, oh, let's do this. And so, uh, and one of the things that we try to do with design is really take a step back and say, okay, you want to do that, what are you trying to accomplish? What's the emotion you want in the audience? Um, so we try to find, get from them what their goal is and then use visuals to help support that. So it's a, it's a big communication thing where we're constantly going back to them and saying, hey, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? And then let us use our expertise to help you accomplish your goal. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> when you're tweaking things, it's get a final result. How much do you rely on speed paints and lighting studies versus, say, real world records, like photographs or? The question is, uh, when we're tuning something, how much do we rely on real, real world reference versus, I like, think we might. concept of a lighting study for speed paints. Yeah, that's a great question. It, it, I guess it's it, it would sort of depend on the game you're doing. Um, we're, you know, our game is based uh, more in. Uh, what I call hyperreal, it's you know, definitely based in realism. Um, so in that case, I'd probably use uh, photo reference, but the way that we work with the concept art is um, very early on, we'll create some, uh, as you saw, for, the, for like events, speech and visual targets, uh, using photo reference um, that's just, we just have. Uh, and then I start to tune and tweak the colors, and then I'll have the concept artist actually take, uh, say for example, an environment and actually um, draw and paint it with lighting um, to get close to the photo reference. And then as we go into the progress, into the product track even more, then we actually went out and shot a reference that was kind of, um, was actually very close to the settings that we're going to create. And then I go back and tweak that, you know, through the Lightroom stuff that, that Adam, Adam said to start to get close to the colors that the concept artist has done. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a process of starting off early with just found, found items to start to create the direction early, handing it off to the concept artist to start to bring you know, that lighting direction um, closer to the game. And then in this case, we could actually go out and shoot it. So we actually did go out and shoot it, and then I take those shots and then bring that back into to, uh, close to our concept artist. And then that shot is actually what I give to the, to the environment um, feed and, and the lighting leads. We're totally out of time. We've got one more question. My name's got one more. Yes. Uh, you have some examples of photographs using uh, light up with various types. Uh, how do you give that play? 
Yeah, I mean, it is, it is quite, uh, it's a lot tougher. Uh, well, it would depend again on the game. So ours is open world, so you can go all over the place. I think if you've got more, like, a, a, a more finite level, you can actually really craft those shots. You know, a game like NBA Street is very easy. Um, so in open world, we can't get it perfect, but we're constantly looking for that. So, for example, um, you know, we might see, see an edge where we have a hot edge versus a, uh, versus another hot edge, and we might say, hey, let's take out that light so we're creating more spaces, so we, so now we have a dark against the light. Um, the other thing that we're doing, and we're going to do it near the end, is, um, um, at least in our game, you know, they're trying to craft the missions a bit more. So we'll know kind of the path that the user is going to take. So we're going to actually go back in once we kind of know more of those, those paths are and craft, craft that again. Um, but you're right, it's, it is much more difficult in an open world scenario. Um, but we try to have those really high end goals because it's going to get us much higher than, than if we didn't have them. And you don't have perfect cases, um, but we, we get a lot closer um, than if we didn't have, have that kind of thinking done. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot.